Hi, Randy K7AGE from the 7th Call Area District from Oregon, from Curry County, Gold Beach, Grid Square, CN72, CQ Zone 3, ITU Region 6, Latitude 42.34 North, Longitude 124.41 West. So I haven't used that opening video in a long time, so I thought I would uh, add it to this video. My clock and time video has turned out to be very popular, so I thought I'd do one about location and maps of how it relates to amateur radio. So before I get deep into this, uh, anytime during the video, if you feel that you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to my channel, please, and, uh, and please share it with other people on your social media. I'm also using QR codes in this video like I did in my time and clock so they'll appear now and then over uh, the video here and if you have a uh, you know up-to-date uh, smartphone uh, you can point the camera at it and it'll take you uh, directly to that link so I'll also put the links in the show notes. So why are we interested in location for amateur radio? Well, one of the questions I get asked quite often by people who are unfamiliar with the hobby is, how far have you talked? Well, I need to kind of know where the other station is. Or you might like to know the distance and direction, because uh, it's always fun to know if you, if you were talking 600 miles or 6,000 miles, and which way do I point the antenna? It's not always obvious. So when you get your first license, the FCC will set your district number based on your home QTH. Now, you can change this with the vanity call sign program. Like my original call when I was located in Rochester, New York, was WA2AGE. But when we bought our land here in Oregon about 15 years ago, I used the vanity call to change it to K7AGE. And there's also these types of call districts for many other countries like Canada has their call districts and Japan and probably just about every other country. So I mentioned grid squares uh, a moment ago, so let's dig more into that uh, because we use it a lot in amateur radio. So from Wikipedia, they say a maidenhead locator compresses latitude and longitude into short strings of characters. This position information is presented in a limited level of precision to limit the number of characters needed for transmission using voice, Morse code, or any other operating mode. So the notation is in pairs of characters. So like my grid, is CN72. So the CN are the first two letters of the field for my area. It's not very detailed as this is a rectangle based on 20 degrees of longitude by 10 degrees of latitude. So they start off with a, uh, the map of the world and divide it into these uh, 20 by 10 degree rectangles. And then as you zoom in we get more and more detail. So the next pair is the number 72. So I'm CN72. So this is the square. And this is now a one degree of latitude by two degrees of longitude. So this is, keeps repeating. We get finer and finer squares as we add more digits to the locator number. So I found this grid square map that allows you to zoom in down to, I believe, 10 character locations. So it gets to be pretty detailed. So um, you can play around with that. That's kind of fun and you can find your, your grid square. The ARL has a grid square distance calculator. So you can enter in uh, two grid squares and it'll tell you the distance between them. And you can find this information with a lot of the radios now. So here I have my ID51 uh, ICOM radio, and it has a GPS in there. And it tells me um, what the latitude and longitude is. And it says my grid square is CN72TI. So 
A lot of radios or apps on your cell phone can give you this information as well. Many of uh, the logging programs and, and popular programs like FT8 will show you uh, the distance and probably the direction to point your antenna based on grid squares. So how do you know how to point your antenna? You, you may have an idea, but you, you may be wrong. Like my impression of where to point my beam for Australia is it's to the southwest because all the maps you see, the uh, United States is on the north and uh, Australia is on the south and it's usually over on the west and uh, I'd point my antenna in that direction. Well, if you did that, you're pointing your antenna in the wrong direction. It's basically due west. So when you look at a projection map uh, based on the curvature of the earth and everything, it'll show you the exact way to point that. So ARL has, has some wall maps you can buy, hang on your wall, and showing with the United States in the middle of the, the map, and you look around the edge and you can see where to uh, point your antenna. Tom, NS6T, has a website that will generate a ASMUSO map with your station's location in the center and draws the world around the edge so you know which way to point your beam. At the website axelsandantennas.com, uh, they sell a lot of um, amateur radio style maps you can hang on the wall because everybody needs maps on their walls in their ham, ham shack. Uh, but one of the neat things they have, which I'll probably buy here before too long, is that they'll make an insert to go inside the front panel of the ASU rotators where it has the um, 360 degree uh, circle based on your location so you know where to point your antenna. So that's kind of neat. So to help you keep track of what grid squares you've worked, um, KE4AL has an XL based uh, grid square map system and uh, I see a lot of the satellite people use this map and it, uh, it uh, fills in the grid green when you get it confirmed so uh, that's a handy tool to have if you want to keep track of your grid squares. If you're an FT8 user, um, Grid Tracker will connect in with the WJST software uh, to keep track of your grid squares automatically there. So another tool uh, to keep track of your grid squares. So another interesting location system uh, that I don't see used with amateur radio, but maybe with public service and dispatch and search and rescue and other things like that, is called What Three Words. So what this has done is taken and divided the world up into three by three meter squares and assigned a three word definition to them. If I bring up the software and you get it for your phone or on the computer, if I put in the three words slang, cake, and desk, it'll take me to the Washington Monument in Washington, DC. So something to have in your bag of tricks. So there's a lot of awards that are based on various locations that you may be working. One of the most popular ones here in the United States is to work all states, the ARLWAS award for working all 50 states. And again, a lot of these awards, you can do it on single band, multiple bands, mixed mode, single mode, CW, FT8, phone, wherever you want. If we take the state award and go a little finer detail, CQ Magazine sponsors the worked all counties awards. So this will take you a little bit longer because there's uh, over 3,000, about 70 something counties in the United States that you can, can work. And there's various nets, the county hunter nets on HF to help you go after those. The DX awards, uh, probably the first that you may be able to qualify for is the worked all continents award by the ARRL. And this is when you confirm the uh, a QSO of the in each of the six continents around the world. Um, zooming out a little bit in detail, CQ Magazine sponsors the Worked All Zones Award. Um, so there's like 30 or 40 zones. I haven't looked it up. I'll put it down here. And uh, that's another one that you can work for. And the granddaddy of the DX Awards is the ARRLs 
DXEC, the DX Century Club Award, and that's awarded to you when you've confirmed 100 entities. Again, Alaska and Hawaii count as an entity. So if you work those two plus the United States, that counts as three of the 100. So lots of awards that you can chase. So in your logging programs, it'll keep track of you know, states, grid squares, if you have that information to enter it in, counties, if you have that information to enter it in. And that's why it's good on your QSL cards that you include all of these location uh, details. So some other interesting maps and clocks are, well, the granddaddy of them all, I'd say, is the Geochron. Uh, they've been around for years and years and years. These things are built in Oregon here, and it's a large uh, map clock that you would hang on the wall or build into the wall, and it shows you, uh, you know, a map of the world, shows you where the sun is and where it's dark and where the gray line is, because amateur radio operators like to work the gray line because signals propagate through the gray line. Um, and um, it displays a lot of other information. It's a little pricey. It's about $2,500 for the mechanical version. In the last couple of years, they've come out with the Geochron 4K. So this is a $450 uh, computer box, basically, and it connects up to a 4K HD monitor, and it shows you the similar world map display with the light and dark areas, gray line, but a lot of other information. It'll show you satellites. You can bring up a page that shows the, uh, uh, the prefixes for all the countries and entities around the world. It'll show aircraft paths, weather patterns. Um, they're, they're pretty neat. Uh, Tim, Tim uh, K3LR, who has lots of towers and lots of radios in his multi-multi contest station, has four geochrons. <laughs> And uh, I think his big one's on an 84-inch display, so that's, that's pretty neat. If you don't have the Geochron budget, uh, ham clock software that runs on a Raspberry Pi will give you a poor man's version of a Geochron. And again, it shows you the world map. It shows you where it's lit and where it's dark, so you can see the gray line. It'll track a satellite at a time, and you can click anywhere on the map, and it'll give you that uh, DX location and the direction and the, and the distance. And uh, so for a price of a $50 Raspberry Pi and some software and some time you know, getting it configured, you can have that running. And uh, I've enjoyed that here on my uh, operating desk here now for for several months. I saw on Twitter from K3RRR uh, a few months ago that he found these uh, giant mouse pads. They're like 18 by 30 some inches and it's kind of a cushy pad. It's not a slick surface and it's, it's a map of the world. So I kind of enjoy that here on my, my operating desk as well. I'll let you know it's a little spongy so if you write with a pencil you can poke right through the paper. So. You know, if you have several sheets there, you can, that works out okay. So over the years, I've also collected several atlases. So these are fun to have at your uh, fingertips. You can look up to see where the other station is or details of their area. So when we're able to go to Hamfest again, keep your eyes peeled on the manufacturer's uh, desk for promotional material. ICOM has their uh, grid square maps. I think they're still available. Yesu used to have these world maps. Uh, I don't think they're available anymore. Um, the Quartzfest group got a whole box of these years ago, so they still <laughs> hand them out as uh, raffle prizes. It's also good to have a collection of paper road maps. Uh, even in the days of uh, Google Maps and Waze and all these things, you know, if you lose cell phone connection, you may not have maps. So I keep a set of these in my vehicles and a set of the, the local and state maps from, for the Oregon area in my go bag. So I think it's time to wrap this up. It's getting a little long. I'd like to show a couple examples here from Sean, KX9X. Uh, he's posted some photos of what some of his maps and stuff in the last couple days on Twitter and Facebook. 
Uh, this Facebook photo shows his station back in the 80s there, which is what caught my eye was the map on the wall with all the uh, pins in it for the various countries that he has worked. And then he's posted this uh, grid square map that he puts uh, uh, crosses through when he's worked a station and, uh, and a double cross when he's uh, confirmed the station. I think this is for his satellite contacts. He does an awful lot of satellite operating. And another challenge that he's put forth to himself this year is to work all the Japanese prefixes on FT8 from his location in uh, you know, Illinois or Indiana or somewhere where he's living now. So that's going to be quite a challenge for him. And he's been keeping track here of those contacts on a couple pieces of paper. So, so the collection of maps and keeping track of all your contacts is a kind of another little sub hobby of the amateur radio hobby. So, um, I'm going to say uh, 73. Uh, this is Randy K7AGE from Gold Beach, Curry County, Oregon, call sign district number 7, grid square CN72, and I forget my latitude and longitude.